instruments involved in individual concealment are the basic simple tricks practiced by the pioneers. Ever see this picture before? Oh, you must have. It's been part of the Army training program since 1942. Remember it? It was in color then. But this is the same film, and it's still Lowell Thomas's voice. Remember, you never know when you're being watched until it is too late. The color and oily surfaces of the body reflect light. Important, consequently, in individual concealment is the blackening of the soldier's face, hands, and the back of his neck. Yes, millions of American soldiers have seen this picture. The men who are overseas fighting have seen it. The question is, are they using what they learned? Does camouflage pay off in combat? Here's your answer. On their way to Kiska, these soldiers used GI paint to tone down their faces. It wasn't mud, but the idea was the same. And it began in training. They didn't know that the Japs had slipped away through the fog, but it was no time to take chances. These paratroops knew their lessons too. The afternoon of June 5th found them ready for the big jump into Normandy, fully camouflaged. Take a look at the garnishing in their helmet nets. Well, did you ever see this before? The idea is simply to break up the outline of the helmet effectively. Usually a few branches will do the trick. Judge for yourself the way it works out in combat. This is the island of Elba, and you're looking at a soldier who knows the score. He took his garnishing from the grass and the twigs around him. It gives him a perfect blend. And these doughboys pushing our lines deeper into France are protected in the same way. The garnishing breaks up the outline of the helmet, and the net cuts down the shine. The same trick works on vehicles. The foliage on these tanks isn't worth much when they're moving, but when they pull up and go into action, they're pretty hard to spot. Maybe it seemed like a waste of time back in training when you heard a voice telling you, Energetic preparation of all equipment before coming into contact with the enemy will ensure you're facing him with the advantage in your favor. A shiny ring or watch, or anything you might not think of, can flash like a mirror in the sun. When you saw this, maybe you thought it was just movie stuff, just the kind of thing that puts a guy to sleep when he's looking at a training film. Well, maybe that's what this man thought. Hiding in the ruins of Casino, he's perfectly concealed by the shadows. Except for that ring. Now let's see what else the training film had to say about shadows. Hitting the shady side of a bush makes you difficult to get. The sunny side means black against white, and therefore an easy mark. This New Zealander is obviously an old hand at sniping. Watch how he sticks to the shadows so that he does the sniping, not the enemy. Black against white. A 37 millimeter gun on a white beach can be the kind of target a Jap dreams about. But in the shadows of the underbrush, well, see for yourself. This was Guadalcanal at a time when we had to use every shot in the locker to hang on. Yes, yeah, shadows can work for you, but they can also work against you. This is what TF5-646 had to say. Eliminate the black hole of the tent's opening with a blanket. In training, it was a tent. Here with the Fifth Army in Italy, it's just a shelter. But the black hole made by the opening was eliminated by a guy who found use for a tip he picked up at home. The bigger the shadow, the bigger the problem. Now, the shadows cast by these oil tanks in Italy were as big a camouflage problem as the engineers had to face. They solved it by using steel wool on chicken wire. Result, the net erased the shadows and blended the installation with the broken terrain. The terrain that can stop you doesn't exist if you use what you've learned. Less favorable terrain like this must be supplemented by careful use of natural materials to destroy telltale outlines and shadows. Here's how that worked out in action. The scene is Anzio. Long branches cut from nearby trees did just what the man said, destroy the telltale outlines and shadows. When the trees are bare, 
they may still be used for concealment. In that case, we rely on the network of intricate shadows cast by the branches to prevent detection. No, this is not part of a training film. This was taken in the woods outside Casino. There's a long tom in there, but don't think you're going blind. The Nazis couldn't spot it either. Even though it's only a few feet away, it's tough to find. Issued drapes supplied the concealment the bare trees lacked. But what happens when the lessons aren't applied? Like this one. Don't leave belongings and debris about under the delusion that the objects are too small to be seen from the air. Now these men have done a fine job of camouflaging their bivouac in the cactus at Ponte Olivio in Sicily. Yet all their care can go to waste if the enemy spots this. You see, combat doesn't cure your mistakes, it emphasizes them. And combat can drive you to greater imagination than was ever demanded in training. Now here's an idea of what we mean. One common method of concealing a tank is to drape a garnished fishnet over it. These soldiers at the Anzio Beach had knew the normal method of draping a tank, but in battle, nothing is normal. This was a time for imagination, so the crew dug in alongside a haystack. They placed the tank below the level of the ground. Then they stretched the issue net across both haystack and tank. They used a lesson taught in training, but added a twist or two of their own. Men who think in terms of camouflage don't have to run to the manual every time they strike a snag. The training film had something to say about that, too. Individual ingenuity will suggest the use of novel and effective means to employ whatever materials are at hand. Concealment cannot be obtained by the numbers. That's right. We stretched this huge net the length of a Bailey Bridge to conceal from ground observation the number of men and the type of equipment that crossed over it. In the Solomons, Ingenuity licked some really tough conditions. Engineers using chicken wire and feathers blended aerodrome installations right into the jungle. But we have no copyright on Ingenuity. This Italian equivalent of a hot dog stand turned out to be a Nazi pillbox. The Germans also built thick cement walls inside the harmless looking farmhouses which dotted the countryside. Where there was no farmhouse, they built one around the pillbox and got the same effect. Matting made this house look entirely too real. Paint had its uses, too. From painting windows on a pillbox to transform it into an innocent house, it was only a step to the creation of this movie theater on the beach at Austin. Here, the Nazis dressed up their pillbox as a place of entertainment. But another look will show you that it wasn't entertainment they were selling on the inside. They also had a way with the big things. These apartment houses atop a rocky Salerno hill turned out to be a vital railway bridge. The dummy buildings effectively hid the bridge from our warships standing offshore. And how about this peaceful village situated in the Belgian flatlands? It's just like hundreds of other tiny communities in the path of war. Its architecture is typically Flemish. Its paths are wide. Its shrubbery and lawns are neat just what you'd expect of the Belgians. But there's something very strange about this Belgian village. Very strange indeed. Because it's not a village, but an airfield that used to belong to the Germans. The lovely rural roads are concrete runways. And the neat trim houses, hangars. The quaint Belgian village is as phony as Hitler's handshake. No, the Germans don't camouflage by the numbers. Neither do the Japs. To draw fire from a real position, they set up this dummy installation at Cape Gloucester. The dummies may look silly now, but the shells we wasted here allowed the real Jap artillery hidden nearby to fire that much longer. So camouflage really does pay off in combat. And it'll pay you to make it second nature. To these men in France, camouflage is a habit as much a part of their routine as firing the gun. They're using it because they need it, just as other men all over the world are applying the camouflage lessons they learned in training. Don't ever forget the importance of concealment.